Canaltech Especial FutureCon 2014, cobertura completa e entrevistas exclusivas do mercado de telecomunicações. As operadoras estão fazendo grandes investimentos na rede 4G para garantir faturamento, suprir demanda, que é crescente, para estar em conformidade com os órgãos reguladores, enfim. Como recuperar esses investimentos e ganhar dinheiro com o 4G? Para responder essa questão, estamos aqui com o Philip Wilson, que é diretor de estratégia e operações para a Telecom da Deloitte. First of all, thanks for coming. Well, we just saw the auction, uh, the auction here in Brazil for the 4G spectrum, uh, but the telecoms, they're going to... They're going to uh, have to wait until 2019 to start using this. So it's a kind of a difficult uh, moment for them, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, one of the challenging things is to migrate to new technology, you have to clear spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whether you're clearing it from existing users or you're um, basically clearing it from yourself if you try and migrate within your own spectrum holding, it's a big challenge. It's kind of compounded by the fact that um, the new technologies are more efficient in wider, larger blocks of spectrum than the old technologies where they're designed for much bigger spectral allocations. Um, and so that creates a second level of problem. And then I'd say the third area is we're seeing a, a different dynamic in the market that with voice we had self-regulating traffic. People can only talk so often. Um, and it was fairly narrowband traffic. And so we had a, a situation where the resources to deal with the traffic, whether that was construction of new sites, towers, compression or you know new generations of wireless technology modulation and coding um, came along as fast as the traffic grew in fact slightly faster so we're able to accommodate that, that growth with data we're finding the opposite is happening that the data traffic because it's not constrained by the human factor is growing so much faster than the tools we have to deal with it it creates a lot of pressure on spectrum because spectrum availability or um, you know, building additional tower sites, microcells, etc. basically the two tools that are left because we know the trajectories of technology and compression. What did you learn from the other places you studied? I mean, uh, how do the telecoms, are, what, what are they doing to, to still get some money out of all these investments? Uh, a, a couple of things are going on, right? So the, the, the fundamental thing, and you see this in the US quite strongly, is that they are monetizing the growth in traffic. So. You know, people talk about the industry as a commodity business, right? Even if you accept it's a commodity business, it's a commodity business where demand, i.e. the need for megabytes, is doubling roughly every year. Yeah. So, you know, if you can accommodate that demand and turn that demand growth into additional revenues, it more than covers the cost of technology. And what actually happens is it incents you to deploy the new technologies because they have a much lower unit cost per bit. They're expensive to deploy. But, you know, 4G is a lot better at carrying data than 3G, and the unit cost is much lower. And you also create new products as well. Exactly. Well, that's the other thing is that, that um, in voice, everybody essentially has the same product. It's a question of coverage and dropped calls, but, you know, fundamentally, voice is voice. In data, um, there are other performance attributes. There's the core network attributes, which is a big push in, in certain markets, the U.S. being an example, where speed... Is, is very important because speed and, and latency, that's the delay in getting communication, they very much improve the user's experience. Um, and then in addition to that, the larger players have more money to invest in creating and working with the ecosystem around them. That could be content, that could be applications, could be a lot of things. For example, you know, we're seeing a, a, a deal going down right now between AT&T and the uh, NFL. And just you know, from what's in the public domain, one of the critical contracts in there was uh, DirecTV's ability to sign the NFL and to sign it in such a way that AT&T can put that exclusive content over mobile devices to create another differentiator. So you're talking about 4G, but in a while it's going to be 5G. Exactly. So how, how are, things, are, are things going too fast? Or? Think no, because you remember we're faced with this this really strong, you know, doubling of demand. People say, well, how much speed, you know, how fast do I need my network to go? Well, the traffic's going to slow down. But if you look for analogies in other digital markets, and PCs is a good one, we've got 28 years of Moore's Law growth on PC performance, and it's not really slowing signs of slowing down yet. Why would wireless, which is really digital wireless data, is being driven by that computer ecosystem, why would that necessarily need to slow down? And therefore, you have to keep reinventing the technologies to, to accommodate it. 
what shall we expect for the future? So what I think you're going to see is, firstly, 4G will become you know, a very mainstream technology. I, I saw the, um, the, the forecast for 11% penetration by 2019, 2020. I would actually say they are low. I think what will happen is we'll start to hit a tipping point where the, the, high, the high profit and the important opinion leading users will want the performance of 4G before that. The, the carriers will see the economic benefits of going to 4G in the lower cost per megabyte and we'll see a much more rapid acceleration. So I would expect by the end of the decade probably more like 30 or 40 percent penetration of 4G. You know, device cost is an issue, but a lot of like high volume developing nations like China and India are going to solve that problem for us just because of the volumes they create. That's it, right? Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you.